I said, you said, he said, she said. <laughs> this is he said, she said. I'm Jay Fidel, and that is Marianne Sasaki. Yes, I am. My buddy and a fabulous host on ThinkTech. She does Life in the Law every Wednesday at... 1 to one thirty. One to one thirty. Um, but every now and then we get together and we do he said, she said, and we compare notes, and wow, the incredible things that flow out of that. We're going to talk about politics today. Marianne loves politics. I love politics. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's my hobby. <laughs> well, it may be my vocation. Who knows? Well, you we'll never see know. about that. <clears throat> You're on the right road for that. <clears throat> We have a lot of politicians here. I mean, they come, they go. It's really interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think people have to understand politics. They have to understand how the, the system works. They have to stand, understand how to make good choices. They have to figure out what's going on. Because politics, you know, people say it's a dirty business and all that. It's a blood sport. But the fact is, it's how we govern ourselves. It's how we govern. That's right. And if we don't pay attention to it, it will do things that we don't like. Oh, yes. It may do things we don't like anyway. Oh, yes. <laughs> but we'll have greater control if we participate in the process, which is, a, you know, what did Detox will say? It's, a, it's, t it's tumultuous. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so the first thing on the, on the deck, I, just, I brought in my primary ballot, okay? And it says, it says State of Hawaii primary election, August 13th. I guess I got to send it in pretty quickly. It's the end of this week. Yes. And it says you got to declare yourself you know, Green Party, nonpartisan, uh, Democratic Party, American Shopping Party, hmm? Constitution Party, Republican Party, Libertarian Party. And so you declare yourself. And so it's really interesting. It's one page, it's one well, page and a half. Um, so what, what we got on here, if you're a Green Party, there are no candidates. I don't, know, I don't know why you have to declare yourself if there are no candidates. And you can only vote for your party. Strange. Uh, then there's a nonpartisan ballot, and there's a guy named Cal Griffin running for House of Representatives in Congress. Democratic Party has a bunch of people running for the U.S. Senate. Uh, all Democratic. Christensen. Bra Brian Schatz, I know. Uh, Honeychurch, Ray's. Uh, shots and um, uh, Miles Shiratori, I know him. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I I mean I know I know of Brian Shots. I don't know. I mean I don't know. I haven't been following this race that closely. I think Shots is he a he's the favorite for sure. Yeah. Um, then we got U.S. Uh, representative. Uh, this is Democratic Party. We got uh, Ahu Issa. She used to be in the in the legislature. I think uh, we have Colleen Hanabusa. She's the favorite. Howard Kim. Javier Ocasio, we had him here for, uh, um, you know, um, uh, uh, a show. Yeah. Well, no, we don't call it a show. It's uh, a cast, a webcast. Uh, it's a, a, a speaker's corner. Oh, okay. You know, five or ten minutes. He was here. Um, Sam Pulitasi, uh, Lay Sharsh Davis, uh, Steve Tatai. I don't know those people. I don't know them. Um, and for the state senator now. We have Kim Coco Iwamoto, uh, Keone Nakoa, Carl Rhodes. He's incumbent. Oh, yes? Yeah, so okay. he'd be the favorite. Uh, and then for the state representative, District 25, we have unopposed Sylvia Luke, very powerful woman. Uh, in, uh, she's the chair of the House Finance Committee, very powerful. Okay, then we got uh, American Shopping Party. Of course, I never heard of them until I no. looked at this. John Goofrey. And a constitutional party unopposed, I guess. I mean, within the American Shopping Party for U.S. Senate. And then and the Constitution Party has Joy Allison for you. It's really interesting how much is going on here. Yeah. The Republican Party for U.S. Senate, John Carroll, he, he came down uh, a week or two ago. Uh, Eddie uh, Perkowski, John Rocco, uh, all for the Republican Party Senate. For the U.S. House, <clears throat> Shirlene Ostroff. And for State Senator, District 13, we have Rod Tam. He's a guy that uh, was was in he was in the, the Hawaii legislature. Then he went to the city council. Then he got in all kinds of trouble about using campaign money to take his constituents out to lunch. Oh well, yeah, it um, happens. But he came back. He's running again. He's walking the streets. I tell you. Uh, then oh. the Libertarian Party for the Senate. We got Michael Kokoski, and for the uh, federal, you know, for congressional U.S. House. Uh, Ellen Yim, and for State Senator, District 13, 
Harry Ozols. That's me. Then we got on the back side, we got Office of Hawaiian Affairs. We got a lot of people running. Um, this is Hawaii resident trustee. And everybody can vote. You know, you don't have to be Hawaiian to do this. Uh, Bo Kahui, Robert Lindsay, and Mililani B. Trask. Who, she was on the show a few weeks ago. We're influential. Yeah. She's a lawyer. She's the one who um, hated uh, uh, geothermal, but now she wants to do geothermal. So. Uh, then we got Jerry Flower, Molokai resident trustee, Jerry Flowers, Alapai Hanapi, and Colette Machado. At large, uh, we know some of these guys. K uh, Kali Akina, he's our host on Monday. Uh, he'd be my favorite. Uh, Daniel Anthony, Haunani Apollonia, uh, she, she's been with Oha a long time. Uh, Douglas Crum, uh, Leone Kalima, uh, Kali Ma Makakao and Paul Mossman, that's an old Hawaiian name. And then for the city county uh, mayor contests, listen to this for, um, you know, uh, like a primary, maybe it's more than a primary. Um, we got Kurt Baker, Zachary Bird, Kurt Caldwell, Ernest uh, Car 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 Caravallo, Peter Carlisle, Charles the Jew, Lawrence Friedman, he's been here. Um, Tim Gary, Ron Hokley, he's been here, uh, Lillian Hahn, and Mike Powers. Uh, oh, Carvalho was here too. Yeah. So that, that's, um, that's, what do you think that's about more the than a primary, race? I think. That, that's kind of like the election, I think. I there. think it is. Yeah. Well, what do you think about it? I mean, I, you know, I, I think it's going to come down to DeJou and Caldwell, yeah? So. Uh, yeah, and, and um, Deju is running well, and he's collecting a lot of money, and he seems he seems to actually uh, have an edge over Caldwell. I know he does, but I don't know. You know, Caldwell is like so, is so plugged incumbent. into the yeah machine. I think he's plugged into the machine. The machine's going to help him get votes, and I mean he's really plugged in. I mean, I, I saw something in the paper recently. He earns approximately one hundred and thirty-five, hundred and forty thousand dollars for his salary. But then he's got this bank directorship that pays him two hundred thousand dollars more. Wow! Can uh, you do that? That's I, I, while you're in office. Can you still do so. that? I guess so. Yeah. Well, that doesn't you know, seem I right. I mean, it's doing pretty well. I mean, it's, he's actually getting more from the directorship than he is from the city. Should we city. talk about our favorite subject, heart? Yeah. Okay. That that you did know you, that, is, is this this is a, a mandate election. It isn't pretty it? much is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you like the Jew because. Uh, He's, he's going to stop. He's going to stop rail. What is he going to do with rail? He's going to stop rail. But I'm no. I like. Uh, I like actually Peter Carlisle. But um, Carlisle's not, not going to stop rail. No, he's not going to stop rail. And I'm pro rail. And I'm tell. I know. I know. I understand that it's over budget. I understand that it's not well planned out. I understand all the arguments against it. But I think that just the art, having a rail in place will change the city. It will change the city and who, how people interact in the city. Will it change it for the better or the worse? The better, I think, because you'll have people of all strata um, using the subway. Although maybe people still insist on using cars, but if but if it's good and it's fast, there's like no reason to 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 use the hassle of a car to like get to the office or whatever. It's better to just jump on a train and jump off a train. But I mean, your heart has been fraught with problems. My, my heart. You are our heart. I don't, Hawaii my heart's are. fine. Um, <coughs> oh, yes, but your I, but heart. But I feel that rail is the road to perdition. Why? We can't afford it. I know. You know, we have uh, un unliquidated um, liabilities um, in this. We can't pay the state retirement system. We can't pay the city retirement. Billions. Um, we can't fix the roads. They're but, still a mess. But would you advocate? We have, we have sewage problems. We have uh, energy issues. It's going to cost us a lot of money to, to go to clean energy. Well, you know there's an answer to that, right? Um, Raise taxes. Well, but you know, we have the highest uh, sales tax, calling it that loosely, uh, in, the, in the country because of the way it applies to everything. Everything. It applies you know, to literally really, everything. It's really hard. Doing business in Hawaii, you pay. You pay we you have a very high income tax. Uh, relatively speaking, our property tax is low, but watch, it's going to get higher. It's the place. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to we're going to wind up paying these unlike. You know, we had a program uh, a year ago uh, about unliquidated liabilities in Hawaii, 
And uh, the estimate we, I got from the speakers on and off, you know, their public statements was when you tally it all up, it's about $40 billion. We can't afford it. Think of, think of Puerto Rico with $70 billion. Right. We're not far. No, we're not far. <clears throat> but what, then what would you, would you have them just cut their losses and stop the, stop the planning and stop everything and just cut their losses? And, and take Elect me mayor. I'd love to have you mayor. And I would tear it down. You would tear it down. I would tear it down. Or I would stop spending money on it and over time tear it down. But would you advocate another idea in place? I mean, do you advocate the idea of mass transportation? I mean, absolutely. I'm, yeah. Absolutely. Mass transportation are the best bus system in the world, right here. No reason we can't do that. We, we did doing pretty well until they started pull them, pulling the money out of the bus and putting it right. in the rail, which right. is another of offense, you know, to good planning. Um, yeah, I would, I would build a great bus system or rebuild it in the case. But the bus system is still victim to the traffic problems, which are terrible here. You have to put everybody from the car into the bus. You don't have so many cars. Yeah, but then you have to sell that idea to people. I think it's well, a hard to sell. you have to sell, sell rail to the people, too. Well, that's, it's a They're little bit of a different do thing. It, Marianne. I know. You, you I'm on go, the losing side. You want to go to Costco and you know, load, load, load up your car with all that stuff, you know, cheap price, take all that stuff home, restock your house. You can't do that on rail, never. Well, we used to do it in New York. I mean, we, we do it, but it's different. It definitely is not the same as... This is, this is a car kind of society. Sport, uh, yeah. When I came here, <laughs> when I came here in 1965, I got out of the airplane and, and there was a taxi cab picked me up and it was, it was actually a Cadillac. And I, you know, come from New York. Well, Cadillac, taxi cab, they don't do that. But people in Hawaii love their cars. And, you know, I've seen all the dealers make all the money over time. I mean, to be a dealer is to be like king. It is, there. it really is. I, I, I found that out this past weekend when I uh, met somebody whose father was a car dealer and, and the person I was with whispered to me, he knows everybody. He knows yeah. everybody. And, and they keep on selling. and. This, you know, in Bermuda, you, you, you can only have so many cars and you got to ride a bicycle. We, we don't really favor we bicycles. Should, we we should favor limit, cars. We, we don't favor cars. electric cars, actually. I mean, we haven't made much progress there. We have very, very little progress on bicycles, uh, even though we have the best weather, arguably the best weather in the world, so far, anyway, until climate change changes that. But, but you know, <clears throat> I'm just thinking we have really blown it in terms of, you know, um, modular transportation, you know. Uh, we have really blown it in terms of transportation that works with the environment. You know, if they lose people like you, that, then they've lost everybody because you're one of the most forward-thinking people I know and you understand, you know, the importance of mass transportation and, and if, if somebody like you is not supporting it, they've really blown it, I think. I've, I've never supported it. Really? And, I, you know, I started out not supporting it because the Hanneman administration was cramming it down our throats, mm -hmm. and it was. Um, and people weren't really thinking about it. Nobody was talking about it. The neighborhood board system was systematically separated from that conversation, I can tell you. And that was during the Hanneman years. I mean, he was going to jam it down our throats, and he did. And, and that hurt him bad politically. Um, so now we have, you know, the, the legacy he left. And it's, um, it's going to cost more and more. If you think it's going to be limited at, what, what's the latest, six or seven billion? Think again. Right. It's going to be 10 or 12 or 14, who knows what, by the time it's finished. I don't think we even calculated. No, I don't think they know how much it's going to cost, actually. You know, I really don't they think they finished, really can fathom. They haven't fathom. finished with the, all the arguments on condemnation. It's going right. to cost a fortune. Right, right, you know. right. Condemnation and where it's going to go, where it's going to end, where it, where it should end, what it should do. I mean, it's... This is the ultimate can down the road because, you know, what's going to happen here is that you and I, whatever we say, we're not going to pay the price. It'll be somebody else later. And those kids are going to write checks for all their whole lives. That's bigger right. taxes. And they're going to be skating on the possibility of Puerto Rico. Um, you know, we, we, we have lots of bills to pay. Uh, when we come back, I want to tell you about something I heard on NPR today. Okay. That is along the very same lines. Okay. And, and, and this morning. How about a six-hour show, Marianne? Oh, sure. Let's do it. Let's do a marathon. I you'd say that. We'll okay. do a fundraising marathon. Right. That's what we could do. <laughs> Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our healthcare system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. 
We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, I'm Kili'i Aquina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for E Hanakako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on E Hanakako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Aquina. Aloha. Bingo. Well, staying on the theme of politics, we really have to talk about your unfavorite guy, Trump. Well, I, yeah, I wanted to talk about my unfavorite guy, Trump, um, but I didn't want to bring him up because we were talking about municipal politics. But uh, did you see the letter that all the national security advisors wrote that, that said that he didn't have the, um, the demeanor to be uh, commander in chief? It was in the New York Times today. About like 50 national security advisors drafted a letter and said that he, he, did not have the, he did not have the knowledge, he did not have the demeanor, he didn't have the character to be... To be. That means like pushing the button. Can you imagine? I mean... Oh, it's terrible. I mean, he represents a, a constituency that could be completely irresponsible. But, you know, I want to tell you something that's interesting about him, and I think people should be aware. That, uh, people who think Hillary Clinton might be such a lock, he's raising funds like Bernie Sanders raised funds in little amounts, and that, like, ground, that ground roots, uh, grassroots groundswell, that indicates that he has a tremendous amount of support out there. and People go, clearly want to come out and vote for him. So I, don't, I wouldn't trust too much the um, polls and things. I, I, I wouldn't trust the, the national security advisors either. Well, <clears throat> they're, they're not, they're not going to be able to stop him. No. I mean, the, people, the people who are going to vote for him don't care what the national security advisors have to say. They're part of the establishment. Right, right. So, well, and now, you know, the Republicans have a new, maybe a new candidate, a new anti-Trump candidate, too. His name is Evan, it's not, it's McMillan, I think, Evan sure. McMillan. And he, well, <laughs> Trump will make hamburger I'm, out of him. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes, and I'm terrified if they even try. I mean, I, I'm just terrified of a constitutional crisis. I really am. Like, on the day, you know, like a month before the election, the Republican Party decides they want this other guy, and what? how are they going to try to depose Trump? And it's just... You know, Trump is a walking constitutional crisis. He is. You know, if he, if he doesn't have one before the election, he'll have one, if he wins, he'll have one after the election. Um, I mean, he, he's, he's not part of the system. I think he's ever he read the Constitution. He doesn't respect the system. What? I think he's ever read the Constitution? No. I don't either. <laughs> I don't think he knows. I, I, I think he's really ignorant on so many points. Yeah. Well, but we the people who this. would vote for him, you know, don't care about that. No. They don't care that their president be qualified. They don't care. They're dis gruntled and very unhappy and wants somebody to voice their anger and he do, he voices anger very well that's like I must say he does that very well I don't I don't think people realize back to your national security group uh, I don't think people realize exactly what we're in right now um, we have we have um, uh, skirmishes all over the world right it's a you know the war on terrorism is a, is a world war it's I, a world I don't know war. if people realize right that now. but it's the world war three really because yeah. it's against everybody you know and last night I saw a movie about Stuxnet it was a documentary revealing what was going on about Stuxnet very very interesting movie Donald Trump ought to see this movie it's called zero days zero days I want to it's I about the see development it. between the US and Israel of the Stuxnet virus which was which was mm, mm, pointed, it went worldwide, but it was pointed at the uh, c centrifuges uh, in the nuclear facility in, in Iran, and it blew them up. And, and it's a, a whole new, I mean, it offers all kinds of new possibilities. Did this, was this developed by Israel? I mean, or developing in conjunction? In a partnership. I think the code was done here in the U.S. Oh, yeah. By the National Security Agency. Anyway, uh, and, and CIA, uh, they, they, they fight this war. They have a, a command right. called the Cyber Security right. Command. Right. And uh, you know, up to that point, uh, they were not doing aggressive moves you know, to aggressively destroy things. This was different. And this was, th right now we live in a kind of world of deterrence, like nuclear deterrence, right. it's cyber security deterrence. Right. But everybody's got weapons that can really wipe the other guy out. And in case you think it's just theoretical, 
you know, if I knocked off your power grid, people would die. Oh, you know, I, I saw a movie actually recently about the failure of power. It was like a, one of these kind of futuristic, you know, movies where, you know, the sort of the apocalyptic future. And the apocalypse was actually the end of uh, electricity, end of power. And literally everything falls apart, you know, everything falls apart. And that's why, you know, it's always so scary uh, when there's a blackout in New York because people are always afraid that it's some kind of strategic hit and, and you know. One of the airlines was down yesterday, today, and I, I haven't read the article ex exactly what happened, but it struck me that just as easily that could have been that the computer was, was hacked by somebody overseas, including by a state actor. But are we really capable of, well, first of all, are there state see, actors see this, anymore? See this movie. I will. And you will see we're capable of amazing things. We and everyone else. State actors have the money, have the resources. You know, after we did the Stuxnet thing on Iran, they, uh, it became a matter of national pride, nationalism. So they brought in all kinds of talented people from their own kids, their own population. And now they have a, a very robust cybersecurity uh, command themselves. Really? Right? Really? You know, Stuxnet could not happen again, not the same way. But, you know, I mean, the point is that we are at war in terms of cybersecurity. Absolutely, it absolutely. It is devastating what could happen. Uh, it could bring the whole civilization down with lots of people dying. Absolutely. So the, the question is, does, does Trump understand this? It's not so much pushing a, a button for atomic weapons. It's all kinds of buttons now. It's weapons of mass destruction. Right. It's cybersecurity. It's like if, if you really let go, let her rip the way he talks about it. Well, yeah, he seems to think that nuclear weapons are toys and it's he just a one, one toy word, in his a, arsenal. A war of deterrence. Right. I, that, do you think Hillary Clinton understands? I don't know how well, I don't think she understands so much either. I don't know. I don't like, I don't think her approach to uh, world security is, I don't know, it doesn't seem to be working, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, she stepped in it a few times, yeah. and I don't think she's that facile with, right. with uh, high-tech things. Right, right. So the question is, um, you know, how, how do you really organize that? The people in this movie, uh, some of whom were high-level uh, people around cybersecurity, seem to be pretty sensitive. But the, the, you know, the organization itself, you know, the establishment itself, they didn't do a good job. And, uh, See, we need to have like another Manhattan Project or something like that with the respect to cybersecurity. I think we do. There needs to be a... I think we do. I know. Wouldn't right that be now. the right way? I mean, the amount of money that went into uh, cybersecurity in the last few years is like $50 billion. Right. I don't know how often they spent that, but that's the kind of budget we're right. talking but about. But it needs to have the finest minds in the country working on it. It needs to be super high priority project. You yeah. know, just, I, I Just remember, though, that they for a fraction of what we would spend, you know, given wages and whatnot, um, somebody else can do the same thing. So we think we got an angle on them. And we may, we may have an angle in some ways, but they could, they could respond. Well, they could respond, but I like to think, I don't know if this is still true, that the talent remains here. The best talent in the world remains here. I don't think, you know, China could in a war of cybersecurity, I would venture to say there will be no winner. Really? Yeah. I mean, imagine That's... cities going down, uh, incapable of running anything, and, and certainly medical things would be over. You wouldn't have medical things. So just, you know, just imagine your day with all the contingencies in your day right. and nothing would work. Right, right. That was one thing this movie was so great at showing. Everybody was so dependent. It was a few years in the future and everybody was so dependent on electricity to like read and it just all just all kinds of things. And I, so we're dancing at the edge of a precipice. I, that's scary. See the movie, you know. Great. I I'll, think well, Trump I can, want, can send a note to already. Donald Trump. He should see the movie. Yeah. So how do you feel? Is he gaining or losing these days? Hard to say. I think that's really hard to say. Um, I think when he was relentlessly attacking that poor Muslim family, he was clearly losing. Um, but, you know, Americans have short memories, and that'll have been a blip in, you know, in the dog days of summer, and there'll be some other thing that'll come along. Uh, it's just amazing. 
you know, I, was, I talked a little bit about this on, on the weekend. It's just amazing that the Republican Party is under assault from every direction. It's under assault from the likes of Donald Trump. It's under assault from, for, uh, you know, from the Tea Party. The, the, whole, the whole party is, is, is just unraveling as we, it's the most fascinating thing to watch. They did it to themselves, you know, Marianne. Yes, I think they, they did. With the Tea Party. Yes. Oh, I definitely think they did. It was more important that they made their point. It was more important than the national That's budget right. of keeping the national you know, government working. Right. I mean, how dare they do that? I mean, I feel they all breach their, their oath of office. Yeah, their fiduciary duty to, the, duty to, the, right, to the country. To the people. That they would, yeah. there were some spiteful right. thing they decided not to play. And um, that's really totally irresponsible. And I think it was just a matter of time before, you know, the, the groundswell against them came back. But it's just, it's just, I mean, if I was a Republican, I would be a, a, a wreck. Because, I, I mean, I just don't think you can see, I think Donald Trump isn't really a Republican. He doesn't represent the party. I mean, he's nothing like Mitt Romney. He's nothing like the Bushes. Um, you know, people sometimes float the idea that he's like a secret weapon to get Hillary Clinton elected. And as crazy as that sounds, it's almost plausible because he's such not a Republican. I mean, he's so not a Republican. So what do you think? You think he's, he's gaining or losing? Well, I, I think it's, you know, I think he's creating a constitutional crisis. I think Republicans, you know, have been working towards this for a while. Right. And he's the perfect answer for right. what they've been doing. Right. Or the perfect, mm, the perfect support for what they've right. been doing. Um, but, you know, I think what's happening now is, uh, the, you know, the government is at great risk. If he wins, you know, our country is at great risk. The Republican Party is obviously you know, in a transformation of some kind. Right. It's not a good thing. I mean, there was never a doubt that George Bush, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, no, not, that's the father, right? The, the son. Yeah. The, the Herbert, Just George Bush Jr. W. W, right. It, it, it was never a question of whether or not he could govern. I mean, he, he might be governing in ways that you disagreed with, but I mean, there wasn't an actual dispute as to aptitude. W would this guy really be able to understand the nuances of the problems facing the Ameri American people and make a well thought out decision? But I mean, I don't, I don't have any faith that Donald Trump can do that. I don't think he wants to even do that. I told you, I think he just wants to win, to win the presidency. I don't think he really has that much interest in being president. I mean, it's got to be a pretty tedious job. All the world's cares on your shoulder, ne no adulation, constant criticism. I mean, it's hard to be the president. I don't think he would, he would like that position so much. He loves doing what he does. Yes. He loves the adulation. He loves the applause. He's he loves, a showman. He's like he P.T. Barnum. He loves people Barnum. arguing over him, you know. Right. He's a showman. This is what he was born to do. But when he has to do the drudgery of actually governing, actually, you know, tussling with Congress, actually, you know, attending state dinners, going to summit conferences, you know, can you see him at like a G8 summit uh, conference or something? I can't even see him. I can see him uh, taking something which some people might feel, uh, you know, is boring and hard work and making it into, um, into uh, a real mess. Great, For his own fire. gratification, for his own ego gratification. So I hope we never get there, you know. And we still have a few, several weeks, what, 12 weeks, 13 yeah, weeks? Yeah, it's like three months now. And um, it's, day get, to day. it's getting close. And I hope nothing, nothing really puts Hillary off the track because between the two of them, she really has to win. Are we almost done? I have one thing to say about Hillary. Say it now. Hillary, Hillary is not blameless. She continues to insist that the FBI said she did nothing wrong. Instead of taking responsibility for what she's done with her emails, she just continues to insist on her innocence. I don't understand why she's doing this. So she's not, I just wanted to give a little fair time and say that she's not utterly without blame. But she's no, she's no Donald Trump, that's for sure. I mean, he's just much easier to... Where are we getting our leaders these days? What forces make them? You know, Citizens United is not helping us. We need millennials. We need to get the baby boomers out. So yeah. far as I can tell, they've mucked things up. And that's why the baby boomers have to do this. They have to get these ballots. This is the <laughs> ballot of the ballots. You can't not be involved. If you're not involved, you're going to pay a huge price. We are all going to pay that price. Yes. We're going to be involved. Oh, we must be involved. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. That's Marianne Sasaki. He said, she said, we said. Oh.